I want to talk a bit about um, how I'm doing story in Gunpoint. Because uh, it's a story-driven game, uh, but one of the things that I've learned making it is that I'll probably never do another story-driven game. <laughs> and that's partly because I've caught myself being guilty of a lot of things that I've always hated in video games um, in the process of making Gunpoint. Most of the stuff I've cut out, so in the final thing you're not going to see as many ludo narrative crimes <laughs> as I have committed in the course of its development. But it was really uh, embarrassing to find how often I would look at what I made and just think, this is exactly the shit I pan people for all the time in reviews. Um, and it's because my stupid move was I picked a setting that really excites me in a, well, it excites me in every possible way, uh, which is like near future noir themed um, espionage. Um, and the problem with that setting is I'm really excited about a video game I can make in that and all the kind of cool abilities you can have and uh, the cases you take on and all, all that stuff. But I'm also really excited about the stories I could tell in that, that setting. Um, and so before I had like any semblance of the game design um, as it stands today, I started just writing a script. I just wrote like whole scenes of like how you're going to meet this client and then what that client's job will be and all this kind of like story stuff. Um, and that like poison development for months. <laughs> like it was really, until I cut all that stuff, I was really hampering what I could do with how the game was going to work and the overall structure of it and just like going from like, oh, I've got an exciting idea for a game to actually making a game that you can play and is fun. Um, that transition is really hurt if you are trying to maintain the integrity of some imagined scripted sequences that are going to tell some story in a completely linear, completely predetermined way that the player has no say in. And uh, at best, if the player is really into it and they really like your writing and they're really excited about the setting and they like this character, then they might enjoy it once. <laughs> and what I discovered as I started making that stuff, I didn't get too far actually making any of it, but um, every time I do make anything that's pre-written and is a scripted scene that can only unfold in one way, is that it's really fucking hard. It's much, much harder than making really complex, emergent mechanics that the player can play again and again and discover new things with every time they play with them. Uh, it's harder than making open-ended levels, which is one of the harder things I've had to do in Gunpoint. Um, it's harder than almost any other game design or uh, implementation tasks that I've encountered. And the end result is worse than the result of any of those other things. So I don't know why anyone ever does it at all. And I think my theory is that stories are good and games are good <laughs> and we've become slightly addicted to getting both. Like, we, you know, we used to, in uh, all AAA games, have a... Uh, all the kind of, you know, big budget mainstream games have a story and they are also a game. And we haven't found particularly great ways of mashing those things together. Uh, in fact, I would say we've really just stopped at the very first way we found <laughs> pressing those two things together, which is to uh, reduce the game part of it to really just shooting dudes or whatever your central mechanic is, if it's puzzles, then uh, the puzzles. And then like taking the mechanics of that that are fun and then kind of hedging them in, like restricting them and making sure you can't do like, it's going to be shooting people, but you can't shoot that guy because he's actually really important to the plot, he's your friend. Uh, so this gun that, have been taught, that we've taught you to enjoy using and that we've taught you has this enormous power and can kill anyone, can't kill that guy, he's invincible. Um, and you shouldn't shoot him, and you're bad if you shoot him. And it always feels like we didn't so much find a way to combine story and games. We just sort of took the broad and incredible and complex sprawling nature of games that are incredibly open-ended and uh, systematic and fun to play with and fun to tinker with, and then, like, try to cram it into this <laughs> really thin, narrow, story-shaped wedge. And we broke the game doing it. Absolutely, categorically broke the game doing it. Uh, I'm talking about Call of Duty. I'm talking about um, almost any, like, linear... Even Half-Life 2, I think, breaks the rules of the game to make it fit with the story in many different ways. Um, and... The common theme in all these games is they try and tell a story whilst also giving you mechanics, which they teach you are universal and then they turn out not to be universal because they have to uh, mess with them to make the story work. And 
So you break the game doing that. You restrict it, you make it less interesting, you make it more linear, you make it you, you betray the rules you've taught the player. And then in shoving it into the story-shaped hole, it still doesn't fit. <laughs> Even when you really, really cripple hamstring the game to make it work as a story, you still break the story mold when you shove it in there, and the story doesn't really make sense for what you're doing in the game. You're, you know, um, uh, in Uncharted, I haven't played Uncharted, but I know a lot about it because I've watched the entire thing as a movie, um, all three of the games, <laughs> which is good by the way, you should do that if you can. Uh, you kill hundreds and hundreds of people, and yet you're this kind of like, you know, dashing, um, charming, likeable hero. Uh, but actually you're a mass murderer, and that's, you know, a deeply terrible thing, and really the things you've done are unforgivable. <laughs> you could never actually function as a human being after doing them. And so the story still doesn't work after you've broken the game to ram it in. You destroy both things by trying to combine game and story to that extent, trying to make it a sort of cinematic directed experience. You break both game and story. And that might sound overly harsh if you really enjoy some of those games, and I do. I, I absolutely love Half-Life 2 and I'm really excited about Bioshock Infinite, which does exactly the same thing. Um, because if, you, if both of these starting ingredients are good enough, then there's enough good left over after you've smashed the two things to bits <laughs> that there's still this compelling mishmash and it's weird and bizarre. And one of the cool things about games is that you know, there's loads of there's thousands of different ways of making them and uh, each one is kind of interesting in its own way and each one is a broken mess and each one is a different broken mess and they're all interesting broken messes. But <laughs> if you're a new developer making your first game and you're doing all of the programming and design and levels and uh, writing yourself, um, then you can't afford to mash two things together in a way that doesn't fit because you just don't have time to sort out all the bullshit that creates and all the fiddly, crazy stuff that, um, that you have to do to make it work. Particularly because once you've done it, as I say, at, in the absolute best case scenario, it's of interest to the player once. And you know, if they absolutely love it, they might play it again and get less pleasure from it. Um, but that's not a very exciting thing for me to you know, work towards, you know, I've spent three years in this game now, I don't want to spend three years to make someone enjoy something once and maybe a little bit twice. <laughs> uh, so pretty early on I realised these scripted things weren't working and I realised the plot had to fit around the game, like it had to be the, I had to have a system basically for some plot happens and some game happens but the two don't interfere with each other too much. I can't make the plot define the game, I can't make the game define the plot. So part of the challenge of that is just writing it, um, and writing an overall story is really easy, writing dialogue is really easy, but making a story that gives you an excuse and a natural reason to break into 20 different high security buildings one after the other without any doing anything else at all, you just literally, that's the game, that's, you know, it has to be that because that is what is fun about this game. Um, and if I introduce a new section, like a sort of forced stealth section or a mounted gun section or something just to support the story, um, it would be a massive amount of work and also betray the core principles of the game and not be concentrating on what is actually fun. So you have to break into 20 high security buildings and then you have to take a compelling plot and try and make that explain <laughs> why you have to break into 20 buildings. Um, so I don't feel too bad that the that, that was difficult. Um, and actually, I think I got most of the way to making it make sense. You'll be the judge of this, obviously, but um, like you're a freelance agent and your speciality is stealing data. So it turns out if you set a plot in the present day or near future, there's actually a lot of, if it involves kind of crime and guilt and uh, murder, then there are a lot of good reasons why a piece of data could be really important to that plot, and uh, namely evidence, right? Um, and in particular, in a um, in high security buildings, and certainly in the near future, uh, cameras are going to be fairly um, what's the word uh, ubiquitous. So footage of things happening is going to be uh, all over the place, and that's kind of what most of Gunpoint's plot revolves around. Um, and so yeah, the, my, the solution I said along basically to have conversations between the missions. And the conversations are where the plot happens, the missions are where the game happens, and the two rarely meet. <laughs> there are, I think, maybe four or five different uh, 
scripted scenes and when I say scripted scenes like one of them is just there's a guy talking on the phone in a room in this building and your job is to eavesdrop on him and when you do you hear his conversation then you move on nothing happens like there's no interaction between you and him because there can't be because that's really difficult um, and then there's the intro which is a little bit uh, scripted and but there's only even in that there's only about 3.5 seconds where you're not in control and that's the very first thing that you start up the game, something happens, then you're in control, and you're in control forever from then on. Um, and then those are so I kept that as brutally brief as I possibly could, and even then it started to feel like a hell of a lot of work, like a disproportionate amount of work for really what those scenes achieve in the plot. <laughs> if I'd known they were going to be that hard, I would have just written them out somehow. Um, but the one I do like. Uh, and think was worth the work. It was the most work, but it's the very end. Um, and I'm not going to tell you anything about the plot-wise, but um, there is a villain in Gunpoint, uh, or there's uh, an antagonist. It's To call him a villain isn't incorrect, it's just that there are quite a lot of villains. <laughs> um, but there's... Uh, it does all come down to one person, and how you deal with that person is completely up to you. So... Um, there's a relatively non-violent solution or one of the key things is that the, it's not spoiling anything to say everyone in Gunpoint is a human being <laughs> like it's not crazy sci-fi there's futuristic gadgets in it but everyone is just a person some of them have like one person has cool kit like yours um, but everyone else is just uh, a person they may have a gun or they may not and that's the only like distinguishing feature so the final boss of the game, uh, just because he's in an important position in the plot, is not invincible or he doesn't have a thousand hit points and he can't take a bullet to the chest without dying. Um, and that's, you know, a fundamental thing that runs through all of Gunpoint is you shoot a guy, they die. Um, so when you reach the final boss, uh, if you have a gun, I think you probably have to by that stage, um, you don't have to use it. But if you do have a gun and you want to use it, you can just shoot the guy. Um, but if you don't want to shoot the guy because you don't want to kill anyone or because you don't want to make that much noise and you don't want the police to come um, there are other ways to go about it and <laughs> I'm actually not going to I was going to list them all but now I think I probably won't list them all <laughs> but there are it's a situation where there's a direct approach and going through the front door of this guy's office um, and uh, if you do that, you find yourself, your options kind of get reduced to, like, are you going to shoot this guy? Or there may be a non-lethal way out of it, but only if certain other things have happened in the plot. Um, and But before you go there, if you pay enough attention, there are other ways to get to this guy that mean that when you do confront him, his options will be reduced, and your options will be much, much more uh, flexible. <laughs> Including... I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know things like the door bash, I mean, the door opens to someone's face and gunpoint and knocks them out. Um, there's that, and then there's knocking someone through a window, and then there's something else later on involving doors, which you can't do initially, but um, it's very satisfying. And jumping on people and punching them, and a few other things that are just always, they always feel good. And for each one of those things, I know there is going to be one player or more who thinks this is what the game is about i know already there are tests who think like the door bash that is it that is the game that's so good it's it's you know this is what i want to do and i wanted to make sure that what, whichever of those things you really really enjoyed and felt like you know the, the signature move of gunpoint that there was a way to take out the final boss with that thing um so that's the one time that i combined story stuff and scripting with interactivity and oh my god, it nearly killed me. <laughs> but it, it basically works now. I think there's one or two cases where it's possible to get it into a weird state that I still need to fix. Um, but once I've finished that, it will be a story-driven scene that has some scripted stuff about it, but which um, you have a wide variety of possible approaches that all should pan out fairly well. Hopefully. <laughs>